Again, but as many as received him, to them gave his power to become the sons of God. Now, let me start by asking this question. I'm going to we are going to pray for like one minute. We pray in the Holy Ghost because what I want to share in that verse is deep. But before we go into that, how many of you have visited the YouTube channel? Good. You, you have you have gone there. You have gone there. How many of you? Now, okay, you have gone there. Have you gone there? The YouTube channel? No. Mr. Dami, you have gone there. What are you doing? Now, this thing I want to say now is a message on the channel. If you check the channel, there's a message that says power to do and power to become. That message explains this thing I want to say. So if you are somebody that has gone to the channel and you have listened to messages, this thing I want to say now, it will affect your contribution in this thing. But I have discerned all your contributions. <laughs> you have not touched the message. Praise God. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. I will share the mystery with you. Can you just pray for one minute? Lebrendo sika balambre ne kosika balabalaba embre ne kuzuzi varash kembre ati ko farabu eberende kuzuzi varanda balamosi kada balaba ele kwanda baru suzi manakonde suzi varash kende mante O God, open our eyes to see mysteries beyond the veil. In the name of Jesus, take away veils from our eyes and help us to behold you. With an open face in the name of Jesus. Lerundo si vrahash kemente kalabra ante. La kuse ze varanda kusi kapala balabashka. Embre ne no suzi varanda kuski balande gabalabosikate. Embre ne kunda suzi varashka balabante. In Jesus' name we are free. As many are those that received him, to them he gave power to become. The sons of God. How many of you have heard preachers preach and they say things like, The power is already in you. You have the power. So go out and lay your hands on the blind. They will, they will see. Pray about those that are sick. They will recover. Have you heard that before? Hmm? Okay, this one I will not ask because it will be hard to raise your hand. You heard it. You now tried it. <laughs> I won't go for that because. What happened? <laughs> you can go around and you don't tell anybody, they will get you. Pray for those that have us, it will go. People that cannot talk, touch them. People that have deficiency in hearing, touch their hearing, they will hear. That's okay. Touch, okay. And I'll find one sister. What? I cannot hear. Begin to hear. Hello. You find a way to escape. <laughs> Praise God. Now, this is the key. As many as those that received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Of what? Of God. The first power you receive by receiving him is power to become. There is power to do and power to become. It's not the same thing. When you receive Christ, he gives you power to become. You need to become a son first before you begin to do. All those things they are saying, it is manifestations of sons. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there is a power to do and there's a power to become. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it will, the first thing he ingests into you is power to become. Are you there? So because you have received him, he gives you what? Power to what? To become a son. Now, the effect of becoming a son now is that you cannot do the works of the kingdom. You cannot manifest. So when you have the power to do, see, and this thing will take time. Are you there? You need to become first. When you become, then you begin to do so, and the reason you lay end on that one that was blind and the eyes were still there, we even pray for a mad person, is because you, you, it's not like you don't have power. You have power, but that power you have is power to become. That's why you discover there are some bad habits you were holding on to before, but now you are no longer, are you there? It's, it means it's a proof of becoming. The power is there, but it's helping you to become. To become. When you place a, a pot of ice on a gas, 
a pot of ice. Note what I said. A pot of ice on a gas. If you put your hand on the pot, on, on the pot, you won't feel anything. But you will be foolish to say that the, 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 the heat is not doing anything. No. The heat is working. In physics, there's something we call latent heat. The heat is doing something. But you cannot know the effect of the function of the heat. Are you there? Because there are some things it is breaking. That means becoming is a process. But at, a, at some point, that pot of ice will begin to become warm. That's becoming. The pot of ice you won't touch and it, it, it looks as if I know, suddenly you touch it, suddenly that water now can be used to make a bath. That's the proof of becoming. If you receive Christ, the first thing is not to run to your village and say, we are the wishes. You will become victim. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. Some people died because of ignorance. So they went to a, a native doctor in the afternoon and said, I've come to you. <laughs> you will go to God. <laughs> are you blessed? Hmm? The first power you receive is power to become. If you want to do, my question is, have you become? What have you become first? You must first, and I told you, becoming takes what? Do you understand the, the example I gave you? The pot of ice will take time. Gradually, you will see that the ice will begin to float. It's, it's a process. Gradually, the ice water will become normal water. It's a process. The power there is the fire. The fire is still there. As long as the fire is there, it will become. It will Is somebody blessed already? As long as the fire is there, that thing will become. Meanwhile, your objective is to make a bar from the pot of ice. But can you make the bar immediately you put it on the fire? Does it mean it's not on the fire? The fire is power. Does it mean you don't have power? No. But the process. Suddenly the ice, all the ice will fade off. But yet the water will not be fit for a bar. Does it mean there's no power? No. It's not power. You get to a point now that you will have daughters. Yes, the sisters will have daughters. They will even have sons. The brothers will have daughters. They will have sons. But you need to become. Otherwise, if you don't become and you have daughters and you have sons, you will destroy your life. I told I told the young some of my people. I said they not told me. He said. When you begin to mentor sisters and you tell them, don't have boyfriends, don't do this. The Lord said it to me. He said, the moment they obey you, they will make you their first boyfriend. That love that uh, they are supposed to give to that boy, they will give it to you. It happened. So you see sisters, they will see me, they will begin to blush. <laughs> That's it. I will look at that and say, I know what is happening. Are you there? But God has taught me. And the instruction was, they will become vulnerable to you. Don't exploit it. That was the instruction. Are you there? The instruction came in the process of becoming. So if you don't become and you try to mentor people, it is where it is where. Do you do you get what I'm saying? So uh, the first thing is not, I want to gather men. No, your first desire should be how to become. So don't let anybody deceive you. You have the power, go become first. You see, some men of God look at what they are doing, healings everywhere. It did not start a day. It's not when they is it when they gave their life to Christ that they began to do that. No, they, there was a process of becoming. See, if you escape from the school of becoming, you cannot do it. Are you there? If you escape from the school of what becoming, you cannot what do. Jesus became before he began to do. If you read the story of Jesus, you will discover that Jesus did not do any miracle until he graduated from the school of wilderness. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was when he graduated from the school of the wilderness that he now came out and began to raise disciples. That was when he began to do healing and miracles. The school of the wilderness is like is, is likened to be coming. That's why you see a lot of young people using dark powers. They escaped from the school of becoming. They began to do. See, the proof 
that you have truly become is that you have waited upon the Lord. If you are not waiting, if you have never waited on the Lord and you are doing something that looks supernatural, you know your source. Because even the devil can produce results. That's why I told you that it is not about the result. If you point the rod to the rock, water will come out. If you speak to the rock, water will come out. If you touch it, water will come out. But the will of God is that you speak to the rock and not do otherwise. So it means you can get results even out of the will of God. The first power you receive is power to what? After becoming, and I told you becoming is a process. And after that, you receive power to what? Somebody bless me. Can we pray again? One minute. I say, Father, we bless you. Shabrenda kosi la balante kebarando. Ebrendo si karabane kado si pro oski balande. Empre akonde manak suzi harash ken manati. Ebre konte la kuzi zi barash ken manantia. Emre ne kosu tete ne berende kabalando si ke daba. Era kata barande benemosi katalaba. Ibrende kali tu zi barash ken ne monta. Rebebente brekete kada bunda. Ira tu skebante berekote ne balaba. In Jesus name we have prayed. There are two questions here. Just in case as I'm speaking, if you have questions, just pass it forward. You can pass to DJ. Then DJ will bring it to me. There are two questions here. Let me attend to the question then. After that, we'll see how far we can go because we have less than one hour to the end of the meeting. Um, the first question is, in, the, in our last meeting, how many of you, you have not recovered from the teachings? Last Sunday, how many of you? Can you still, those things you learned, is it, you still feel it heavy in your spirit? Do we have people like that? Hi! You still feel it heavy in your spirit. Do we have people like that? That's me. Now, this teaching came from the last meeting we had. That was last week, Sunday. She said, um, you know, in the last meeting, I was saying something like, before you take territory, there is something you must taste. I I told you in the last meeting, I said, tasting comes before taking. And we're using the example of Elijah when he ran from Jezebel. I they were laughing and we're learning, right? The story was funny yet deep. Now, we use the story of Elijah when he ran from the threat of Jezebel and um, he slept off under a juniper tree. Are you there? And the angel of the Lord came to wake him. Hello, rise and what? And eat. At the other time he slept again, the angel came to wake him, rise and what? And eat. And I told you, I said, the reason he, now, I said, the reason he ate of the heaven's bread is because God wanted him to take territories. Are you there? And now ended up summarizing my point by saying, the first thing that happens before taking is what? Tasting. You must taste the heaven's bread before you take territories. So it means you cannot take territories if you have not tasted of the heaven's bread. Why? Because that will be the source of your strength. Are you with me? So she now asked and said, does it mean that, you know, tasting also comes before taking in marriage? Praise the Lord. It's, you see, when, one thing we need to understand is, what we say is a law is a spiritual law. It applies to all fields, whether marriage or business. Test, taking, testing will come before taking. But in, in, in the aspect of marriage, the word testing there will mean knowledge. You must equip yourself with adequate knowledge before going into the business of marriage. Are you there? So your, 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 your tasting, what you taste to prepare for marriage is knowledge. Are you there? There is something you must know for the two of you to stay together. It goes beyond how you look. It goes beyond your beauty. It goes beyond you have gift you can sing. No. If you don't know what you're supposed to know and you're going to marriage, see that you come out out of frustration or you stay there managing and struggling to survive. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, let me go to the second question. Um, this one is based on today's message. She said, you know, I made a point. I said, we must, every child has a name in God. Am I right? And I told you that we need to find the name of the child and not just name the child based on what is happening around or what we see in the community. She now said, what of um, those people that look at what happens to them at childbirth 
to name the child. All these things are still wrong. If you must name your child, find the identity of the child in the spirit. Let what you saw in God define the name you give to the child. Don't guess it. Don't say Abiodun because you gave birth in December period. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't say Yabo because it happened after somebody died, a female. No, that's a wrong naming. Train up a child in the way it should go. Meaning that, you know, you cannot train up a child in the way it should go if you have not captured the picture of the child in the spirit. It's the picture of the child you have seen in the spirit that will energize you to know how to train the child. And I told you that it was easy for the parents of Jesus Christ to train him in the way it should go because they had seen the image, the reality of the son, the child, in the spirit even before what he came. Are you there? Now, if you name your child because of what happened to you while laboring, you will, you will give the child a name out of the will of God. And at the end of the day, you will train the child culturally but not spiritually. So the child will look like the environment but will not look like God. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you see the child, say, oh, don't worry, but you cannot say this is a child of God. Have you seen a lot of people when you see them say, oh, don't worry, ah, oh, don't worry. Eh? They were trained culturally. It's not... It's not a testimony, you guys, spiritual man. They look at you and the first thing they say, ah, come on, don't you have to say, ah, but let, no, you have an issue. The first thing they should see is Christ. They should say, this is a child of God. The most visible thing in your life must be Christ. If that's not true, something's wrong with you. So before we begin to assume whichever state you come from, we must see Christ first. Now, let me give you an example. A woman was in labor and because of what happened around, she gave birth and she named the child Ikadu. You must have heard the story in the Bible. Is it a good name? Can you say that? It means that if you name your child based on what happens around, you will mislead the child. Because your name is your identity. You know some people, they carry the name snake. You don't know. But it's in a design way. They don't say snake normally. But they, they give the person a name that has whose meaning is what? Snake. That's part of lack of discernment. I hope I've answered your question. Do we have any other question? We will not talk now. Okay, good. Yes? Delay, yes? After 20 years, you now give birth. Now say, Olu, why delay me? Abi. Olu, why delay me? You should go to the ceiling. Then you 20 years. Yes, yes, yes. I'm with you. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Praise the Lord. Something can be good, but it may not be God. Are you getting it? What defines the rightness of your name is not the is not the meaning. It is what you saw in the spirit. If your name is Deborah in your spirit, and you give the name of and you name that child Glory, it's a wrong name. It's not because glory has a bad meaning, but that's not the picture in the spirit. Are you there? It's not about the meaning of the name. It's about what is God saying concerning this child. You are naming Rebecca if so bad. Now, listen to me. And that is why many people are missing out in the will of God. I'm telling the truth. Adam did not marry every. He married if. Are you there? What you need to find every just to add Elwa. Eh? He did not marry Eva Ola. He married. Are you there? And Eve also did not go for Adam. You know, Adam. <laughs> she married Adam. Go marry Adama. <laughs> Adam no marry. Go the very Adam. <laughs> if you put you in as a love Adam, will will have fun. The story will have changed today. It just be when Adam married Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jesus will come into your pemu like this. See, your name is powerful. It's not the meaning of your name that defines whether it is the will of God or not. It is, did they capture the name from the spirit? Are you getting what I'm saying? So, eh, are you getting the point? It's not about miracle or no. The question is, where did they get the name from? Is it, is it God that showed them? I think what we read here was that 
Joseph, I'm coming. What we read there was that Joseph was in a dream. And the angel of the Lord came to him and said, the name of this child you are about to be is, will be called what? Jesus. So because they know this one is Jesus and it will, it, it will take away the sins of the world, they, they trained him in what? In that way. The reason our parents could not train us in the way we should go is because they did not capture our name from the spirit. So I'm telling you this so that when you grow old, mature enough to give birth, you will not repeat the same errors our parents made. You will know that at the point of pregnancy, you need to begin to make research. Have you not seen a lot of parents in the scripture making research? Huh? The mother of Jacob and Esau, Rebecca, he went, she went to, to search in the spirit. And from the research she, she got, they said two nations. They did not say two children. They said what? Two. Did they become nations at last? Esau become the nation of Edo. Jacob become the nation of Israel. I said the importance of finding the name in the spirit. If you don't find the name of your children in your spirit, those that are supposed to become nation will become streets. And you will be happy. You, you even say, well, the Lord has helped us. I don't know about my father's day. He is uh, of this. He's not an achievement. Too. As a matter of fact, those people you see their name as street name is a sign that they're supposed to be nations. <laughs> you're supposed to be a nation, Oruko is Oruko Street, and you are happy. <laughs> the Lord will help us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, we have a question. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Praise God. Thank you for that question. There's a remedy. There was a time we were doing fellowship Sunday meeting. I think that was last year. And by grace, we were able to find spiritual names. Are, are you there? We, we were able to discern the spiritual name of each, some of us, right? Now, your spiritual name aligns with your prophetic name. That was a substitute that God gave. Because God knew there, there's error on ground. You discovered, are, are you with me? There is a spiritual name are you there? There is a there's a destiny name that defines what you have come to do. In the case of Jesus, you know the name came from the spirit. So his biological name was his spiritual name. They did not guess it. Are you there? So if you have by choice gotten your spiritual name, you know your identity in the spirit, you have overcome that problem. It will mean that that is the original name. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spiritual name. Is it the same thing as baptismal name? No. Baptismal name, they just find the name for you in the scriptures. No. So some actually got the Baptismal name is not spiritual. Yes. The reason is because should we pray a bit, we should get some spiritual names. So that you know what I'm saying. We should pray a bit. Yeah, let's, pray. let's pray. Let's start. Let's start. I will, let's do the practical so that you know. Let's. I think we still have time to steer the waters. Shebrenda to zivarash ke mande bre oski palanda, ramba bala mande kusi kaba 